If you are getting married, congratulations. It's a blessing from God to have a spouse here on earth that you can love and trust and do life with. Uh, but marriage also comes with important legal changes, especially when it comes to your estate plan. And one question many newlyweds ask is, do I need to update my trust now that I'm married? And the answer is almost always yes. And if you don't have a trust yet or an estate plan, this is the time to also set up your own estate plan, your own trust to make sure that your wishes are honored. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through why updating your trust after marriage is essential, what changes you, sh you should consider, and how to make sure your new family is properly protected. Before we start, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss our new videos with very practical estate planning tips. So why should you consider updating your trust after marriage? Well, marriage changes your legal and financial landscape. The financial landscape changes because now you're married, you're probably um, figuring out your finances together. And so that part is a given, right? But a lot of people, they don't understand the legal component as well, because suddenly you have a partner whose interests and legal rights, they need to be considered. Um, so here's why updating your trust is a good idea. When you get married, their spousal rights and legal changes, like I just mentioned. Your spouse gains certain legal rights, including the right to inherit part of your estate, even if they aren't named in your trust. And in many states, spouses have what's called elective share rights, allowing them to claim a portion of your estate regardless of what your trust says. So some people, when they come to me, they say, hey, I want to set up a trust I'm um, not going to tell my spouse, and I want to make sure that when I die, all of these assets go to X, Y, and Z, like my parents or my children. I don't want my spouse to have any of it. Well, that's a good intention, but the question is, does your spouse have the legal right to at least get some of that? So to avoid potential legal battles, make sure your trust reflects your marital status and clearly states your intentions, okay? So the first place to start is to set up your trust. So even if your spouse does not want to uh, engage and participate in estate planning, as uh, a human being, an individual, you still have the power to make your own trust. So at least you can protect what you can protect. Okay, a lot of people have this miscon misconception that once you're married, you have to do a trust together, you have to do an estate plan together. That's not true. You're still your own person in, this, in, in the sense that um, for your portion of the assets, you can dictate who gets it when you pass. So, for example, you can update your beneficiaries, okay? If you created your trust while single, you might not have included your spouse as a beneficiary. This can lead to confusion or unintended disinheritance. You might want your spouse to now inherit. You might have given everything to your uh, niece and nephew or to even your parents, but now if you died, you want everything to go to your spouse. So, um, Estate planning after marriage has two folds, right? One is to make sure assets go to your spouse. And also uh, the second component is um, what if you want to provide for other people? How can those people like your parents, your brothers, your sisters, your nieces and nephews, your charities or your children from another relationship are also protected? So um, even if you intend for your spouse to inherit other assets, your trust should be updated to clarify their role. So. If you have a trust already, you want to make sure that you update the beneficiaries on your trust. Also, updating beneficiaries on accounts, very, very important. You can list your spouse as a primary beneficiary in your trust or a contingent beneficiary on your trust, depending on your wishes. So this helps ensure they receive the intended assets without complications. Another thing is to do is to change the trustees and the successor trustees. When you get married, you might want to update who's in charge of managing your trust. If you can't do it yourself, right, you might have initially named a friend or a relative or a parent as your trustee, and um, you might now prefer to appoint your spouse if something does happen to you. So you want to make sure that that's changed. Alternatively, if you don't want your spouse to have control, this needs to be made clear. If you still want your parents or a friend or a cousin in charge, you need to make it very clear in your trust, okay? So when you're making that decision, consider your spouse's financial knowledge and your overall relationship when deciding if they should be your trustee. If you just got married 
and you guys are still testing the waters, so to speak, uh, because unfortunately, 50% of marriages end up in divorce. So if you're still unsure, right, not fully trusting of your spouse, you might not want your spouse to be trustee at that moment, but you should still look at your trust and make sure that your intentions are clear in the trust. Uh, And then five years later, 10 years later, you might want to put your spouse, right? So that's your choice. You can put them right away when you get married, or you can put them later as the trustee. So what happens if you don't update your trust after marriage? Okay, so failing to update your trust uh, can actually lead to really put, uh, severe potential problems. So, for example, like I mentioned about beneficiaries, it might be conflicting. Your trust might name different beneficiaries than your other accounts. Like, for example, your life insurance and retirement might be given to your parents, um, but maybe you wanted to change that and have your spouse Uh, be the beneficiary that could lead to disputes if your trust names a sibling as a beneficiary but you want your spouse to inherit this could conflict could trigger legal challenge as well if you died Um, there there was a case recently i think it was last year where uh, a couple got married and uh, immediately after they left the venue the wife was killed in a drunk driving uh, incident mom and husband got into a legal battle in terms of who gets her estate. Husband won, I believe, because he was uh, the husband, legally married, and uh, the wife did not have a will or a trust. And so usually in that situation, everything goes to husband. So if you don't want that to happen to your mom or to your parents, then you need to make sure that you draft an estate plan before you get married uh, to resolve that issue. Okay, spousal elective share claims, like we mentioned before in many states, a surviving spouse has the right to claim a portion of your estate, uh, and this is called elective share. Even if your trust doesn't include them, this can override your trust instructions and cause delays and complications, and so meet with an estate planning attorney to understand your state's elective share laws and adjust your trust accordingly, okay? Also, outdated guardianship provisions. If you have children from a previous relationship or plan to start a family, your trust should be updated Well, um, in in this case, it's your will. Your will needs to be updated to reflect your new wishes for guardianship. Uh, For example, if you pass, who's going to take care of the kids? Um, Obviously, it could be your new spouse. But what happens if you both pass away? Updating guardianships on both of your wills, very important. His will or her will need to make sure that it's consistent. So when you both pass, your guardians would step in. And it should be consistent between yours and theirs. Otherwise, the courts may decide on guardianship without considering your current wishes. There might be a conflict, might create litigation, and you definitely don't want your kids to be part of that mess. Okay, so here are some frequently asked questions that we get. Um, do I have to add my spouse to my trust? The answer is no, but it's usually a good idea to include your spouse to reflect your new marital status and avoid potential legal challenges. So for example, if you got married, uh, you should update your trust, even if it's as simple as I am married to this person because your new spouse can claim, hey, um, my deceased spouse didn't have time to update their trust, but they really wanted me to have everything, right? Um, So updating your trust by saying, hey, I'm married, but I still want these people to have everything if I died rather than my husband, then that's something that you should definitely consider, which is to add the name. Uh, should we create a joint trust after marriage? Great question here. It depends on your circumstances. Joint trust means that both of you create a trust together, co-own the assets together. If one spouse dies, the trust says, what happens to those assets? And then when both spouses dies, the trust would say, what happens to those assets? So joint trust can really simplify the estate management for married couples with shared assets. That's what we do for a lot of our married couple clients. But they may not be ideal if you want to keep certain assets separate. Okay, so if you are in that situation, you definitely should talk to an attorney. If you have separate assets going into the marriage and you want to keep things separate, uh, we usually uh, recommend not just a living trust, but also a prenup or a postnup to make sure that um, it's very clear who owns what so that there's no litigation between the spouse and the beneficiaries when one of the spouse dies because the spouse might say, hey, some of these are actually mine. It's community property, right? It was earned during marriage. 
And so I should have some of it. It shouldn't just go to this third party. So those are things to look out for. And so if you want to keep things separate, if you don't want everything to go to your spouse, you might also want to do a prenup or a postnup. How do community property laws affect my trust? In community property states like California, assets acquired during marriage are generally considered shared property. So this can impact how your trust is handled if it includes assets purchased after marriage. For example, if you set up your own trust, you put your bank account into the trust and you want that bank account to go to your mom if you died, even if your spouse was alive. In that situation, if you're putting money that, that you've earned during your marriage, like from your income, into that bank account when you die not all of that money could go to your parent your spouse could claim a little bit of that of that if you live in a community property state or even if you don't live in a community property state that can happen as well so when you do have separate assets i highly recommend that both parties have their own attorneys both parties have an agreement in terms of hey these assets are mine if i died you can't contest that is not going to you so that's something to, to think about okay now, if you want to set up your own trust, let's say you're, uh, you're married and you want to set up a trust together with your spouse, your new spouse, check out my free trust class at freetrustclass.com. Just a caveat, if you're married and you're, you're doing a one-person trust without your spouse, I don't recommend you do it yourself for all the reasons that I told you today. Uh, you should definitely have an attorney do it. But if you're married, newlyweds, and you want to just do one trust and... Um, trust each other, right? Uh, then you can set up a joint trust. If so, check out my free trust class. Even if you're a, um, doing it yourself and you're married, check out my free trust class. You know issues that you need to talk to your uh, attorney about, okay? So my free trust class is at freetrustclass.com. At the end of the class, I, I do have a paid course that you can enroll in where it's going to walk you through step-by-step how to make your own living trust. So if you want extra hand-holding, you can definitely enroll in that course. Now, before I go, I, I want to share this Bible verse uh, with you. This is something that I've been reading the last few mornings, and um, it's, it's really blessed me. So I want to bless you with Psalm 65, 1 to 4. Praise is due to you, O God in Zion, and to you shall vows be performed. O you who hear prayer, to you shall all flesh come. When iniquities prevail against me, you atone for our transgressions. Blessed is the one you choose and bring near to dwell in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, the holiness of your temple. So I've been reading this for the past few mornings and um, just praising God for all that he's done for us. Uh, you know, we're all sinners, right? We've all broken God's laws. And we deserve death because the Bible says the wages of sin is death. And we deserve to be forever separated from a holy, just, sinless God. However, God loves us so much that he wants to be with us. He wants to do life with us. He wants to forgive us of our sins. He wants us not to hold on to our shame and guilt and sins. And he wants us to be able to be free of sin in in other words, not have the habit of sinning. And so I love uh, Psalm 65 because every morning I'm wrestling with my sins of pride and selfishness, and it does hurt others. And it, most importantly, it, it hurts God. And so I love this verse. Why? Because this reminds us of God's promise that he hears our prayers. Those who love him, those who pursue God, we're all broken. No one's perfect. He's not expecting you to be perfect. But what he wants from us is this uh, repentant heart to turn from our sins and to turn to him and allow him to lead us. And so that's why I love this verse, because it reminds us of God's faithfulness, his mercy, his grace. That's why in verse three, it says, when inequities prevail against me, right, when I'm just sinning and sinning and sinning, when sin has prevailed against me, God atones for our transgressions. Atonement means Jesus died on the cross for us, that he will set us free. That's why Jesus says, the truth shall set you free. And Jesus is the, the way, the truth, and the life. And so Jesus has set us free. Those who believe in the power of the cross, those who believe that the only way to the Father, the only way to God, the only way to eternal life, the only way to heaven 
is through our faith in Christ, of what he did on the cross for us. And so I love that fact that it is not my own righteousness. It is not my own good works that can uh, allow me to have a relationship with God and have eternal life of getting to know God and to be with him for eternity starting now and have this wonderful relationship with him. It is through the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. And in verse 4, it says, Blessed is the one you choose and bring near to dwell in your courts. And this gives me so much peace because it reminds me that God is the one who chose us. Even our faith, according to Ephesians 2, faith comes from God, is a gift from God. It is not something that we've earned. It is not something where we're like, you know what, I'm going to choose to follow Christ. But it is a gift from him. Even that faith is a gift. And so I love the fact that it reminds me that God chooses me, brings me near to dwell in his courts, and we can be satisfied um, with the goodness of his house. We can be satisfied with his righteousness, his holiness, and to live according to his laws. And so I want to share this with you today. I pray that you will receive these words from God and that you will repent of your sins all of us repent of our sins, turn to him on a daily basis and say, God, thank you for what you've done on the cross, that you've sent your son to die for my sins. And now in response to that love, forgiveness, and mercy, I'm going to live for you. So that's my prayer for you as well, is to live for God and watch him do mighty works in your life. So God bless you all. Have a wonderful rest of the day. If you have any questions for me, please ask me in the Facebook support group. Sorry, not Facebook support group. The YouTube comments. I'm not your attorney. You're not my client. Yeah, these are just uh, general information videos that's going to help you um, make your own estate plan and to lead you to the right attorney. And so I pray that God will continue to guide you in your estate planning process. All right. God bless you all. Have a wonderful rest of the way. Bye.